Now then, we are Van Life UK Complete Survivor's Guide. You know, one of the best things about this job is answering your questions. Yes, you, the viewer. Every day, the same questions, over and over again. And up to here, I've had it. Up to here! So here's a little rundown of the most frequently asked questions, or facts, if you like. So, without further ado, let's get the f*** on with it. Question 1 is from Ivor Biggin in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And Ivor says, what fuel can you run them on? I'm assuming they mean diesel heaters. You can use diesel, kerosene, red diesel. You can use a mixture of stuff like vegetable oil and petrol cut at a certain percentage or used motor oil mixed into the diesel, but we don't recommend it. It will clog up your heater so it won't run properly. You will then need to open up to clean it and you'll need a glow plug removal tool, two gaskets and a new atomizer screen to do it. So it's best to just use one of the three mentioned above, diesel, kerosene or red diesel. Question two is from Ronnie Pickering in Hull and Ronnie says, is it true that Paul Rudd is prison slang for upright buggery? Question two is from Richard Long in Wanky, Zimbabwe. And Dick says, can you run them on 240 volts? The simple answer is yes, very easily. And all you will need is one of these, a 240 volt to 12 volt transformer. This one is 30 amp and can power these heaters no problem at all. You could get away with a 15 amp or 20 amp one as it only uses about 11 amps on startup. However, there is a risk of frying your motherboard and wires if there is a sudden power cut and the heater can't go through its cool down process. It wouldn't cost too much to replace the bits that could melt so it isn't really a big deal. The only problem is waiting for the parts to arrive in the post. So you can decide whether the risk is for you or not. I can't remember the last time we had a power cut, so yeah. Well he shouldn't have been bent over then should he? Oh. Question three is from Fanny Schmeller in Moist Cave, California. And Fanny says, are they smelly? No, they shouldn't be. And apart from a few exceptions, if they smell, there's something wrong. The first exception would be if it is brand new and being used for the first time. For the first few hours of use, they kind of stink as the heated ducts and vents get hot for the first time. After a few hours of use, this will disappear and you should not never smell anything like it again. If you do, turn it off and get it looked at. Also, if you have the fuel tank inside the van, you sometimes get a whiff of it when you are near the fuel tank, as there is a breather hole in the top and the smell can leak out. If you've used the pickup pipe on your fuel tank, then you should have a nipple hanging around still, which is perfect for modifying into a spout out the lid and into a breather tube, as you can see here. You might also get a problem with fuel spilling out of the breather hole in the lid if you fill it up too far and are driving around corners too fast. <laughs> Again, modifying the lid and adding a breather tube to the outside will stop this. The worst thing that can make them smell is spilling diesel when you fill the tank up. Don't do this. The smell stays for ages. Maybe install a fuel tank on some drawer sliders so you can pull it outside of the van to fill up and then slide it back in when it's full. Question 4 is from Isa Watering in Cape Town. Sorry, Cape Town. Isa says, how much fuel stroke battery power do they use? We have a full video where we go into this in detail for different consumptions to different settings with different fuels. For more info, click here. When it comes to battery consumption, we haven't had the time to cover this properly yet, so we can't give you the exact maths. However, we can give you a rough estimate. On startup, they use about 10 amps per hour for about three minutes until the glow plugs turn off. So that would be 10 amps divided by 60 minutes times three minutes equals about half an amp hour from your battery. They then use about 1 amp per hour on the lowest setting and about 3 amps per hour on high power. So 24 hours on low power would use about 24 amp hours and 24 hours on full power would use about 72.5 amp hours. Like with the fuel consumption, it would be impossible to accurately work out how much battery power they would use in thermostatic temp mode because there are some variables like how well the space is insulated. As they work differently in this mode and only work at full power until they reach temp and low power until it drops below it again. It'll either be using the 3 amps per hour or the 1 amps per hour with nothing in between. Can we have a serious one now? Come on. Question 5 is from Austin Montego in Dogger Gorge, Australia. And Austin says, where is the best place to buy them from? 
There are a few good places to buy them, including Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, or even straight from people like Max Speeding Rods. The question shouldn't be where is a good place to buy one, it should be what is the best one to buy as the quality or the units and control panels vary greatly. We have been trying and testing units for years now and have written a blog post with our favourite tried and tested units. Link is in the description. And you can find out more about the best controllers on the market in our brand spanking new blog post here. Do I have to? Question six is from Blossom Sawn in Bumbang Island, Australia. Yes, that is a real place and I wish it wasn't. Blossom says, 2 kilowatts or 5 kilowatts? 5 kilowatt heaters are very powerful and kick out a lot of heat. If you install one of these heaters in a medium wheelbase, you will get too hot very quickly. For anything MWB or below, we suggest installing a 2 kilowatt heater. That being said, if you have a very well insulated long wheelbase fan with a 5 kilowatt, it will get hot quickly too. And if you have an uninsulated medium wheelbase fan with lots of windows, a 2 kilowatt might struggle to keep your van warm or take ages to get to a decent temp. So basically it all depends on your specific circumstance, what you want to use it to heat, how you will be using it and a bit of personal preference. If you have a very small vehicle from a car up to medium wheelbase then a 5 kilowatt will be far too hot and the best option for you is 100% a 2 kilowatt unit. You will also need to crack some windows and vents to stop it from getting too hot too quick. This isn't a bad thing though as they work via combustion and produce carbon monoxide so it's always a good idea to let some fresh air in just in case you get a leak somewhere. The heaters also produce a very dry heat that is very good for the inside of your van and stops them getting damp from your breath as you breathe. However the dry heat isn't great for your skin, lips, hair, throat etc. So this is another good reason to let some fresh air in whilst the heater is on. If you have a larger van like a long wheelbase or an extra long wheelbase then you have a choice as the 2 kilowatt heater will be powerful enough to heat the whole van if you turn the power right up however doing this will make the heater use more battery power, more fuel and make a lot of noise as it is working flat out to achieve the desired temp. On the other hand a 5 kilowatt heater won't have to work very hard at all to heat the space so we'll use a lot less battery and fuel and make a lot less noise. Normally, they're easier to find and cheaper to buy than the 2 kilowatt units, for some strange reason, and usually come with much better controllers and remotes. Question 7 is from You Stinky Poo in Halifax. Wait, who told you about that? You Stinky Poo asks, are they dangerous because they're Chinese? No, racial. They are dangerous because they are diesel heaters. All diesel heaters can be dangerous if they're installed incorrectly. They produce carbon monoxide that needs to exhaust out of your van. You should also make sure you have a carbon monoxide alarm installed, as with any accessory that uses combustion like a gas hob or three-way fridge. The Chinese diesel heaters are no more dangerous than the German or Russian brands. They don't spontaneously combust like a lot of people with more expensive heaters might suggest. They are made in proper factories with proper quality control. In fact, Suffolk Trading Standards Imports Department recalled a Vivor unit recently after inspecting one, but it wasn't because they found something wrong with the unit itself, it was because a few sentences were missing from the installation instructions. Think what you will of that, but what I got from it is that the only fault they could find with it was a clerical error. The most dangerous things about these heaters would be if you wired them to the battery without an inline fuse, or with a fuse way too high in the holder, as this can cause an electrical fire if something goes wrong. But that is the same deal for any of the electrics in your van, so it's not really a diesel heater problem, more install error. Oh, this looks like a genuine one. Question 8 comes from Saddam Mess in Jisum. Sorry, Jism. Saddam says, are they easy to install? Yes, they are very easy to install yourself, especially if you have good DIY skills to begin with. It takes about 3 hours in total for a professional, so plan for longer than that. As they are dangerous if fitted incorrectly, but be sure to follow all of the safety instructions to a T. Carbon monoxide can kill, so don't take the risk. We recommend using a mixture of either the Eberspracher, Webasto or Levano Pro installation instructions for all the technical stuff, with our full fitting instructions for a more detailed step-by-step -step walkthrough with tips and tricks added. We'll post links to all four below in the description. Question 9 for the 99. Have you heard of 99? Millennium Dome, Millennium Cone, do you get it? Question 9 comes from Larry Likes in Cats Dingleberry, Canada. Larry asks, which part of the accessory kit would you personally upgrade? 
It's no secret that some of the bits and pieces that come in the accessory kit aren't the best quality and we always recommend chucking a few bits in the bin and upgrading them before installation. We are always getting asked which bits would we personally upgrade on our own heaters. There are a few bits and pieces that we think should always be upgraded no matter what. First is the fuel line if you've been supplied with the soft green type. We've covered this multiple times in multiple videos. For more info on why you should change it, please see our error codes video. The next thing would be the fuel filter. If you've been supplied with any of these types, chuck them away and upgrade to one of these. They are so much better, less brittle, less prone to leaks, can be taken apart and cleaned out and have a water separator too. Another thing we recommend you upgrade no matter what is the exhaust clamps. The ones supplied are pretty useless, hard to get over the pipe and hard to tighten up. They also come loose, so you can lose your exhaust pipe and silencer. The fumes will also pool under your van instead of escaping into the atmosphere and can make their way into your van through tiny holes. Get yourself some of these. And the last thing we recommend that you upgrade is the air silencer to an air filter. It will make the combustion air intake quieter and also stop your heater from sucking up bugs and muck through the air intake. If this happens, the air hole in the combustion chamber can get blocked and the heater won't ignite. This is a massive ball ache to sort out, so it's best to avoid it altogether. With that all being said, there are now some heaters on the market that already have the important parts upgraded, like the Levana Pro or the Max Speeding Rogers new Bluetooth unit. So if you don't already have a heater, why not save yourself the hassle and get one of them? Links in description as always. And last but not least, Tommy Tank from, well, I'm pretty sure you can guess where he's from. Tommy asks, can I run one off a power bank? Power bank. A lot of people use various power banks like the Bluetti, Jackery or Power Oak for off-grid powering campers, rooftop tents, off-roading etc. And we get asked all the time if they can be used to power these heaters. The answer is, some of them can as they can give out enough power to handle a glow plug, but most of them won't. Most power banks with 12 volt outs are only 10 amps and these heaters require 11 amps on startup. So if you are going to use one, you need one with a 12 volt out over 11 amps for the glow plug. But even then, it won't last long. It's far better to run them off of a 12 volt battery or battery bank that charge every time the sun is out via solar or every time you drive your van via the alternator and B2B charger or split charge relay. This way you can constantly keep your battery topped up enough to power your heater. You could use certain power banks at a push or in an emergency but not all will be capable and it won't last long. And the final question comes from me. Can I have a pay rise? That's a no. Nine years at RADA for this. <laughs> well, that's about it for today. I hope you found this informative. We are Van Life UK Complete Survivor's Guide. If you liked, please subscribe.